All right, today is the 2nd of November. <laughs> November, no, October, whatever. It's a true Christian. That's what this video is about. So I know, uh, isn't it strange that, um, I don't know why I'm going to start the, the video out with this, okay? You remember when, I can't remember which apostle said, uh, said something and and Christ said uh something about him having Satan inside of him because uh you know as if uh it was his thoughts it was his ways believe me your thoughts and your ways most Christians are still of Satan uh, Again, this is why this is why repentance is a must, because you're going to show that there's something that's changed in your life to be a, to be so-called a Christian, a person of God, someone that's walking the ways of Christ. Uh, but I, I'm telling you, the foundation has to be off repentance. It has to be, because. And I know the other day I sit here and said I was going to, and I don't know if I ever posted the video up, but I said I was going to declare a scripture in the Bible where it talks about repentance through God, that God would work repentance through people. And I believe that that had to do with the Gentiles that believed. But the deal is, if a person isn't willing to repent, see, our problem is God is moral. We're immoral. That is our problem. Our problem is that our ways are not of God's ways. It's just like the Bible says. Uh, and the thing is, we have to set ourselves apart. I, I'm telling you right now, I know that the majority of Christians out here that have given their life to Christ, they went in, They the majority, I'm talking by far the majority, went in with a certain mindset. But I can promise you, you can change that mindset. I mean, if I told you something that wasn't true and you started believing me, something that wasn't true, I'm going to have to pause this video and I'm going to ruin the whole video. Let me pause it while this airplane goes over. All I know is when it talks about crucifying the flesh and and that is our problem is that most people have not put their flesh to death every day literally I know that this is a thing that a person has to do every day they have to put their flesh you have to do it daily it's a thing that you know and and this is where the, I'm telling you my grandmother was right I'm telling you when you do something wrong and you catch on to what you're doing wrong every day you you ask God for forgiveness right then and there that way you know you're covered under the blood I'm telling you you can get yourself in such a bad position that you're not living for God and you're not right with God that is a problem I mean those are the people that Jesus doesn't know in the end days are the people that are truly not living for him. And when you know that the church, the people out here, is going to be a part of it because it's right there in his word, then you know that there's going to be a problem. And I'm telling you right now, we've got a problem because people are not willing to repent. People are, I mean, repent to us is... The difference between what God repented of, the very first repentance was God, versus our repentance. Could you imagine how much things could have been different if Adam and Eve would have just confessed, would have just repented, done whatever they, the, whatever they should have done at the start? Don't you? Could you just imagine? But see, God had a standard back then. And... He still has a standard it is to this day he has a standard. Christ coming here didn't change as much as people think it changed. We God still has a standard. You guys are the ones out here that have said that this is the same God. And I know it's the same God. People are only fooling themselves knowing that thinking that they can be living a worldly life and be a part of God. 
You know, one time in the church, people lived a different lifestyle. They didn't do the things that they're doing today. And there's a difference. There's a huge difference. The apostasy is happening. The falling away is happening. Why? Because of people's unsound doctrine. Their beliefs, the way people are living their lives... The traditions of men, you can go on and on. You were supposed to come out of her. You were supposed to be smart enough. People were, sp I'm telling you this right now. People that have died and will not inherit the kingdom, God has already forgot about them. If they haven't been judged, they'll be judged one day, cast into the lake of fire, and God will be done with it. Same position as me. Same position as you. You want to live for the flesh. I want to live for the flesh. We don't want to live for God. Guess what? We'll be cast into the lake of fire. And we will be forgotten for forever. End of story. End of story. That is the end of story. And there's nothing we can do about it. Because God pre-planned this. He is his way. And we are not of his way. Only way you're going to be of anything like the way he wants is if you change your life. Not live the same worldly life like most Christians are. I don't think that's too hard to understand. I don't think that that's too hard to understand at all. But a true Christian... Is going to show that you're living for Him. You know, I, I know that God wants a personal relationship with people out here. But I don't think people have to go as far as having such a personal relationship. As long as they're doing what He asks. But when most, Christ, when most Christians out here don't have a personal relationship with Him. And they're not living for Him. That just proves something. That, they, that the truth isn't in them. I'm telling you, I never heard anybody say the apostasy was happening until I had already said it. And then I heard a girl say it in another video. I know the apostasy is happening. I can guarantee you, your church, most of your churches today are not like they were at one time. I mean, literally, I'd go to church. I couldn't remember what day it was. I mean, uh, what time pro football came on, but everybody's so worried about college right now, and pro football, they run out of church for a pro football, especially if they live in a town where, where their football team is out of. I could just imagine living in Dallas, only a couple hundred miles away. I could imagine living in St. Louis. I could imagine living in anywhere in California. You run home to get to your football game. What's more important? Being Christ-like, being around the individuals out here that 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 would make that would make you live and be a better person. Instead, we're living this worldly life, going to bars. I'm guilty of it, mainly for pool tournaments, not to drink. I have gotten high, but it was not. <sighs> Believe me, you're going to prove that you're living for God, or you're not going to have God whatsoever. I'm not stupid. I can tell what's going on, and I can tell that most people can't acknowledge it. Most people cannot recognize it. Then another airplane, let me pause it. So when people do talk about repentance, since, since the big argument today is repentance, and it is, I don't care, I mean, you can argue all day long, people say, I'm, I'm saved by faith and faith alone. It's a free gift of salvation. Well, yeah, yeah, it's a free gift of salvation. That's right. For a person living for him, not for a person that's not living for him. So that free gift, well, it means nothing to those. It's strange. Strange how people acted like Christians at one time and today. I mean, very few do. It's a few amount. Hey, you know what? Believe me here. I don't care what you think. But when you believe in once saved and you're living the lifestyle of a once saved Christian, believe me here, you're not going to fear God. Why would you need to fear God? Why would you need to fear God if you believe all you have to do is believe and have faith? Boy, why would you need to fear God? Why would you need to repent? Why would you need to do anything? You remember, all you had to do was believe and have faith and you were saved.
Isn't it strange that they have the different message than most Christians? Well, no, that's most Christians is once saved. I'm telling you this right now. That's exactly why the apostasy is happening. That's exactly the reason why. But God was willing to repent. People are not willing to repent. What's the problem here? What's the problem here? Yes, repentance. Huh, another airplane. Yeah, I'm running this video because these airplanes going by and having to pause it get me off track. I'm telling you this right now. You're going to show that you're living for God or you're not living for God at all. I'm sorry. You cannot be worldly and call yourself a Christian, but people are. Saying they're Bible-believing Christians and being worldly. It's exactly what it is. You know, when people, I don't understand, why do people always refer to that one scripture when it, the, the very first time I ever witnessed, if you're conformed to this world, the Father isn't of you, okay? So if people weren't crucifying the flesh, that means you're worldly. So the Father isn't of you. Isn't it strange that people always refer to that other scripture talking about being conformed? But yet, the very first scripture I remember witnessing was the Father wasn't of us if we're conformed. And, I, and you'll know a person is conformed when they haven't set themselves apart. They're not a new creation. They're not born again. How can you be born again living in sin? That doesn't make sense. Because you remember, you know, basically at the end of the day, here's what most Christians, honoring God with their lips... Because they proclaim all this. But with their heart, look at the lifestyle. That's exactly what it is. Yep. Honoring God with their lips. With their mouth. Not with their heart. As much as they think they are with their heart. But living in sin, how could they be? You remember, everybody used to say, God's going to look at the heart. See, I can throw people, I can throw things out here that people have proclaimed for a long time. Honoring with mouth and lips, not with the heart. For some reason, your repentance is supposed to be change of mind. And until I watch, until I found that girl's thing one day it says a change of mind leading to a change of heart, the heart, hmm. That's what God looks at. How could a person's heart be good living in sin? It's no good. But that's the way most Christians want to live. They want to do this. What was that again? Honor with the lips, not with the heart. Believe me, a real Christian's going to walk away from all this crap and all this filth. I think the deal is, is when people started making conversation as, about what could a Christian do after giving their life to Christ. Could they still go out and do this? Could they still go out and do that? Well, they still want to do that. They still want to do that. They would still rather sit here and celebrate holidays of Satan... I mean, Christians still take their children out to celebrate holidays of Satan. Halloween's coming up. What are they going to do? Celebrate uh, a celebration of Satan. How about the Easter? A celebration of Satan. How about Christmas? A celebration of Satan. Yep. Everybody thinks they're celebrating Christ when it comes to Easter and Christmas. 
People say, oh, it's not important to know when Jesus is born. Well, yes, it is nice and important because you wouldn't celebrate it during December when Jesus was born in March. What were they doing in, uh, at that time of the year when Jesus was born? They were taking care of the sheep at night. Why would they take care of sheep at night? They take care of sheep at night. Uh, lambs, when baby lambs are born, they take care, they watch the herd. It's exactly what it is. That's exactly. What were they doing? Look at your Bible. Look at your Bible. So everybody wants to worry about December, thinking things are going to happen in December. Things are going to happen in December. Why would anything happen in December when it has nothing to do with Christ at all? So with all those people out here professing something, the rapture is going to happen in December. Why would it happen in December? December has nothing to do with Christ. It's just another month. Oh, maybe a feast day during December. Oh, I forgot about that. I forgot there could be a feast day in December. Well, nothing's going to happen in December, I can promise you that. Yep, Jesus was born in March, if only people came to the truth. Why do you think he was the Lamb of God? They're born in March and they're born in April. Early April. That's when lambs are born. So it's not important for things, huh? Not important to know the truth. I know right now. Uh, I'm telling you, if people are not willing to repent, they're proving that they're not of God. And like I said, for a, for a fact, my next video today will be finding that scripture in the book of Acts talking about where God will work repentance. But how would a person, if a person were to, if God were to work repentance in someone and then they go back to their old ways, how would you get, how, how would you be, how would you be living for God if you call yourself a believer? I'm telling you, you're not going to walk around saying, I believe and be saved for, for the remission of sin except for your first time. You're going to repent. Just like Acts 2.38 versus Acts 10.43, I think it is, talking about believing for the remission of sin. That's only going to be a one-time deal. There's no way you can sit here and declare I believe and you're going to repent. That that means it's going to rep you're going to be in repentive mode. Knowing that you're not going to do the things of the world, the things that brought that made us evil in the first place. You think going out here and looking for promiscuous sex, being a, a Christian is of God? How about cheating? How about drugs and alcohol? How about all this? All these things that so many people don't want to put an end to, don't want to crucify, since all that stuff comes from the flesh. Every bit of it comes from the flesh and the sight. It's where sin comes from. And since sin isn't one certain thing, it's basically things against God is what sin is. It's things against God that he does not, that he, that he is not happy about with what we're doing in our lives. How could sin ever be cleared? I'm telling you this right now, I'll say it again. Jesus Christ did not come here and die for your future sins. You're gonna, if you're going to live for him, you're going to live for him and you're going to crucify the flesh. And when you know that you, when you know you're getting ready to do something wrong, you're going to get to the point when you live a repentive life that when you get ready to do something, you're going to catch on. The Holy Spirit's going to convict you of it. I'm just wondering why so many Christians are not getting convicted. Could there be a reason why? How about the seared conscience, the reprobate mind, carnal mind, the hardened heart? Isn't it weird for a person that's never read the Bible all these things I know of? Isn't it really weird? And I'm not boasting or showing pride. Like I said, I know where I'm at in this position, in God's position right now. I know exactly where I'm at in His eyes. I'm wicked like the majority of people out here. But why does God keep on doing things for me? Maybe hoping that I'll wake up myself? I mean, it's been a couple, three weeks, a month now. Oh, 
Oh, I take that back a minute ago. I was ooh, another airplane. Get out of here. A minute ago when I was talking, I did look up and see a dove. Don't know how many times I've made videos and I've seen doves flying around here while I make a video. But like I said, people will run out and a catastrophe is what's going to have to bring people to Christ. I promise you that right now. It's going to take a catastrophe for something to happen. Just like this woman says that people that America doesn't want to repent, it's going to take a catastrophe for people to repent. It's going to take a catastrophe for people to draw close to God. That's sad. It's absolutely sad that it's going to take a catastrophe. It's going to take a guillotine. It's going to take this. It's going to take that for people to actually draw closer to God. That's, that is so shocking. That is so shocking that it's going to take a catastrophe for something like that to happen, for people to come to God. That is, that is so pathetic, literally pathetic, that a true, if a person that's not living for God, that's what it's going to take. It's going to take something catastrophe, something to happen major in this world. For people to for people to come to God that is so that is so sad to pick up the Bible and actually start living the way the Bible it's literally sad it's sad it's pathetic it's sad that's literally sad when people out here aren't living for God it's sad it's pathetic horrible absolutely pathetic and horrible.